let's return to one of our top stories right now. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is going to be speaking at the United Nations General Assembly. His address is coming up shortly, and it will likely focus on Iran's nuclear program and the peace process with the Palestinians. For his analysis on Netanyahu's upcoming UN address, we're joined now by Steve McDonald, and Steve is the Associate Director of Communications at the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs. Thank you for joining us today, sir. Thanks for having me. There is all sorts of concern about the warmth that broke the ice between the United States and Iran during that conversation, and it could potentially heat up Tehran's, let's say, determination to advance its nuclear program. That's what some are saying. So what, what is it in your, uh, in your mind that are the dangers of a nuclear Iran? What are the major concerns that we're looking at right now? Well, it's very clear that the Iranian regime is feeling the bite of international sanctions, sanctions endorsed by Canada, by the UN, and by uh, the overwhelming majority of the international community. Uh, the Iranian currency is down, Iranian oil exports are down, uh, government revenue is down, and so it's very clear that uh, the Iranian regime is looking for a way to break these sanctions by appearing to be more conciliatory. Our position is that uh, the only thing that should lead to any sanctions relief whatsoever is if the Iranian regime decides to take meaningful and measurable actions to shut down its nuclear program on a various um, on a various series of tracks, including both the uranium track and the plutonium track. Uh, needless to say, as, as you as you mentioned, uh, a nuclear Iran would be a serious game changer in the Middle East. Anyone who wants to know what that would look like simply needs to look at the North Korean uh, example and and look at the the sort of uh, brutal human rights violations and instability that results when uh, a rogue regime has access to nuclear weapons. And so it remains to be seen whether Iran will take this opportunity to truly change its ways, but, um, but we're quite skeptical. It's interesting you mention that because Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu made it clear that he wants to remind everyone that while President Rouhani was smiling in New York during the UN uh, address, the centrifuges were still spinning back home in Iran. So how would a nuclear Iran represent an unprecedented danger around the globe? Well, to begin with, uh, many analysts believe it would instantly lead to a nuclear arms race in the region. As, as anyone who follows the Middle East knows, there's a, a, an open war uh, happening in Syria, in, in Iraq, and in other fronts between the Sunni bloc and the Shia bloc. And the Iranian regime is, considers itself at the head of the Shia bloc. Uh, any move that it makes to obtain a nuclear umbrella for its ongoing terrorist activities, for its ongoing support for the Syrian uh, regime and its civil war, uh, would only be matched with a response from the Sunni bloc, which would, again, almost certainly lead to a nuclear arms race. Uh, it, it's very interesting that you mentioned that even in the midst of this diplomacy, the centrifuges are still spinning. Uh, Hassan Rouhani, the new uh, president of Iran, the so-called moderate, himself has openly bragged that uh, in the early 2000s, when the Iranians were negotiating with the Europeans, they were still building and laying the groundwork for nuclear facilities inside Iran. And so this president himself has a, a long track record of using negotiations as a veil to advance the program. And that's why, again, I say the only, the only litmus test here is action on the part of Iran. Some say that what Israel fears most is a so-called partial deal, one that would lift economic sanctions but would leave parts of the nuclear program still intact. So how can the international community ensure that this is, you know, not, is more a rhetoric than actual action being taken? How does the international community ensure that these nuclear weapons are dismantled entirely, if there are any? Right. Well, the international sanctions regime has focused heavily on uh, parts for the Iranian nuclear program, but unfortunately it hasn't stopped Iran from, again, enriching uranium, installing additional centrifuges and circumventing the sanctions campaign in, in various ways. The first step, I think, is an end to all uranium enrichment and the removal of, of currently enriched uranium from Iran's borders to an outside third party. In addition, I think not only should uh, no further centrifuges be installed, but the 1,000 recently installed centrifuges in, in one location, in Natanz in particular, should be immediately removed and the, the plutonium track would be stopped by shutting down one facility in particular in Iraq, uh, Iraq that is Iran. Uh, and so these are just a few of the areas that I think are important first steps. Anything short of that, unfortunately, could allow Iran to pause one aspect of the nuclear program or proceed in, a, in another direction. So even if there's a pause to enrichment, uh, that doesn't mean that Iran can't install additional centrifuges to get it closer to a breakout point or proceed with the plutonium track. And most experts believe that 
uh, sometime in 2014 is when Iran crosses that new nuclear threshold. So there is still time, but time is running very, very short. And we're going to have to leave it at that, Steve. We do appreciate you joining us here on Canada Live, and we thank you for your insight. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. That was Steve McDonald, Associate Director of Communications at the Centre for Israel and Jewish Affairs.